Hello beautiful friends of Bookish Fam, my name is Brittany, this is Rescues and Breeds, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome, I'm so glad to have you, and if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today we are here to do my January reading roundup. So before we get into the video, I just wanted to mention that this is the very first video that I'm filming on my brand new phone. I recently got an upgrade and one of the main reasons why I decided to pull the plug and get an upgrade is in the hopes that this camera is better than what was on my other phone, which wasn't exactly super old. It was only like two and a half years old, but I was still hoping that an upgrade to the phone would mean an upgrade to the camera. So there may be a little bit of a learning curve in terms of like color correction if necessary and things like that in my videos, but otherwise I'm hoping that things will be unaffected. But anyway, welcome to the very first monthly roundup. This is the start of a new video series that I will be doing on my channel and it's going to incorporate a few different things. It's going to incorporate reading stats from the month as well as an overview of what I read during the month. Now as a reminder I am no longer doing formal sit down wrap ups on my channel. If you are interested in hearing my in-depth thoughts and feelings on the books that I'm reading you are going to have to watch the bi-weekly vlogs that I'm putting out every two weeks. Also incorporated into this video is going to be any books that I hauled during the month, unhauled during the month, and then at the very end we are going to do what I have heard called a balancing of the books. So essentially we are going to take a look at what I started the month with in terms of my physical TBR and what my physical TBR numbers are at the end of the month considering every book that I've hauled, unhauled, and read. So without further ado let's go ahead and start the video with monthly reading stats. So for the month of January I successfully completed 16 books and I read a total of 5,644 pages. Now when I say read I just mean that I consumed 5,644 pages. Y'all know that the majority of what I do read I listen to on audio but for some reason I still prefer prefer to keep track of page count rather than hours listened, especially since I don't listen on regular speed. I listen on two times speed, so I feel like page count is just at least somewhat more accurate in terms of how much I'm actually reading. In terms of ratings, again, one of them was a DNF, so it was not rated. One of them was a nonfiction that I did choose not to rate just because I went into it knowing that it wasn't going to be my thing and I just kind of read it to get it over with and I don't feel comfortable rating that story. I had zero one star reads, zero 1.5, zero two, and I had two 2.5 star reads which is unfortunate but it is what it is. Those were the disappointing new release thrillers that I read in the month that I had much higher expectations for. Two of them were three star reads, one of them was 3.5 stars, eight of them were four stars. I had zero 4.5 and one five star read. So definitely a mixed bag in terms of ratings but I still think it's a solid reading month when eight of the books that I read were four stars. The shortest book that I read during the month in terms of page count was that nonfiction that I mentioned called Autobiography of a Face by Lucy Greeley and the longest book that I read was definitely Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas at 980 pages. In terms of genres, I read one contemporary, one dystopian, four fantasies, one historical fiction, one literary fiction, one memoir, and two mysteries, and five thrillers. And then in terms of format, all 15 of the books that I read were full-length novels, and that's pretty much going to be the case throughout the entirety of the year. You're likely never going to see a comic, a manga, a graphic novel, or anything like that just because I do not prefer to read in that format. You might occasionally see a novella here and there, but for the most part they're always going to be full novels. In terms of the source, 13 of the books were purely listened to on audio and two of them were a mixture of physical and audio. So 100% of the books were listened to in some form but two of them I also paired with physical reading which is typically how I prefer to read fantasy novels. And then I'm also starting to keep track of where I'm acquiring the audiobooks that I'm listening to. So nine of the books including the one that I DNF were acquired from Audible, six of them were acquired from Everand formerly known as Scribed, and then one of them was obtained from my library. In terms of audience, 14 of them were adult, one one was new adult and one was young adult. And young adult of course was Kingdom of Ash and that was to complete the series. And then in terms of author status, seven of the authors were authors that I had previously read, six of them were new to me, and three of them were debut books at the time that they were published. And so what I mean by that is the author may now have other books published but the book that I read by them was a debut at the time that it was published. All right in terms of the books that I read, I started the year with Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros which I rated a four stars. The first book that I actually completed was Morgan Is My Name by Sophie Keach which I rated 3.5 stars. Next I read Last One at the Party by Bethany Clift which I rated four stars. Then I read The Frozen River by Ariel Lahan which I also rated four stars. Next was First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston another four star. And again another four star was Mercury by Amy Jo Burns. The DNF was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia Fairies by Heather Fawcett. Then I read The Fury by Alex Michaelides which unfortunately was a 2.5 stars. Of course there was Kingdom of Ash with a solid five star rating. Next was Close Enough to Touch by Colleen Oakley which I rated four stars. Then unfortunately another 
thriller dud was Only If You're Lucky by Stacey Willingham, which I also rated 2.5 stars. Next was The Vanishing Season by Dot Hutchinson, and I'm kind of waffling at this point between a 4 and 4.5 star rating, because when I got done with that story, it was definitely like a 4.5 star feeling, but I do have it as a 4 star on my spreadsheet. So just know that it was an excellent book, it was a fantastic conclusion to that series, and it could easily be moved up to a 4.5 stars. Next, I read The X by Ella Fair Burke, which I gave a 3 stars. I also read Crooked House by Agatha Christie, which I also gave a 3 stars. Then next, I read that memoir, An Autobiography of the Face, which I did not rate, and I closed the month out with The Last Thing to Burn by Will Dean, which was a solid four star and excellent, excellent thriller. All right, now let's go ahead and start the balancing of the books. So I started the month of January with 71 books on my physical TBR. Out of all the books that I read in January, four of the books were already on my physical TBR at the start of the month, and so after I read them, that brought my physical TBR down to 67 books. Now let's go ahead and talk about the books that I've hauled in the month of January. So first I hauled beautiful special fairy loot editions of the Red Rising trilogy, starting of course with Red Rising, Morning Star, and Golden Sun. I did a thorough unboxing of these books in the very first vlog that I posted for the year because these actually arrived to me at the very very end of December, but since I had already done all of the end of year content and everything like that, I am including these in the January haul. Now out of these three books, only two of them are actually being added to my physical TBR, and that is for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've technically already read Red Rising, but you all know that I'm going to be rereading that book in order to determine whether or not I do want to continue in the series. But also I have a paperback copy of Red Rising that was already incorporated into my physical TBR count numbers. So even though I had already read it, I was counting it as unread because I knew I was going to read it again. So the paperback copy is already counting towards that 71 that I began the month with. So we will go ahead and add Golden Sun and Morningstar to my physical TBR. Next, I went ahead and picked up a copy of Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun. I actually read this late last year and I didn't have a physical copy. So I wanted to go ahead and have a copy on my shelves. Of course, I've already read this, so this is not going to be added to my TBR. But if you're not familiar, this follows Finley Donovan, and in the very first book, she is mistaken for a contract killer because of some wacky circumstances, and she gets herself into some crazy shenanigans. They are a good fun time, solid read. I absolutely adore these stories, so I absolutely had to have a physical copy on my shelves. But again, it's not being added to my TBR. In the same vein, I also picked up a copy of Fireworks by Serena Bowen. This, I believe, is the sixth or seventh book in the True North series by Serena. Bowen. This is a series of romance companion novels that all kind of center around one specific family and they're all interconnected in some way and I really enjoyed this romance series so I picked this up and again not being added to my physical TBR. Next I have all of the books that I selected for my January book of the month and I actually ended up reading all of them in January. So technically they were added to my physical TBR only to be taken right off. So I'm actually not going to be adding them to the numbers in this just because they would have to be taken off anyway. So starting with The Fury by Alex Michaelides. Again I've already mentioned that I did not like this. I gave it a 2.5 stars and I'm officially breaking up with Alex Michaelides as an author. I had similar negative feelings about Only If You're Lucky by Stacey Willingham. This seemed like such a far departure from her other two stories which were so much stronger than this one. I didn't vibe with the plot. I didn't vibe with the overall characters. This was just so weak in comparison to the other two and I'm very disappointed in that. I will absolutely be giving Stacey Willingham one more try because I think that she has the capacity to do great things. She's already proven that she can do great things but this was not one of them. I will be keeping this one on my shelves. I will not be unhauling it, but this was a dud for me. And again, 2.5 stars. I also read First Light Wins by Ashley Elston, which I did actually really enjoy. In all honesty, like the staying power of this story is probably closer to a 3, 3.5 stars. But my enjoyment level while reading this, as well as the ending, which I very much appreciated, bumped this up to a 4 star for me. So I did think that this was a great time and I will be willing to read more from Ashley Elston in the future. And then the final book in the book of the month, January Hall, was Mercury by Amy Jo Burns. This is a phenomenal literary fiction slash family drama that that I just very much enjoyed. It's full of a lot of flawed characters. There's a lot of messy, complicated relationship, family dynamics, and you know I appreciate reading that in stories. And so this was a solid four stars and I'm really glad that I picked it up. Next, I have Happy Place by Emily Henry. This was actually sent to me from one of the monthly Facebook gifting groups that I'm a part of. Going forward, I actually will not be opening these books for the most part because I plan on creating a do-it-yourself Christmas advent calendar where I'm going to be opening them during bookmas and kind of reading them as I go. But this is one that I had already opened. I already have it on hold at my library and I do plan on picking it up as soon as that hold comes in. So it is getting added to my physical TBR numbers for the moment, but hopefully it will be read very, very soon. I also received The Vanishing Season by Dot Hutchinson from another Facebook gifting group. I'm actually part of one that's an official gifting group and the other is actually just another Facebook group that happens to do wishlist gifting events every single month. And I think I'm going to participate in both of those. And then one of the groups, I'm not going to open anything I get from them, but the other I will go ahead and proceed with opening. So this is one that was sent to me and I did read it in January so it is not being added to my
my physical TBR members. Then next I have the book that was sent to me in the adult book only fairy loot box. It is called The City of Stardust by Georgia Summers and I am not going to be adding this to my physical TBR because I'm going to be immediately unhauling it. This is a stunning book I cannot deny. I mean look at those sprayed edges. As always fairy loot knocked it out of the park with the creation of this book but it's just not something that I'm really interested in. Let me go ahead and read to you what it's about. It says for centuries Everlease have seen their brightest and best disappear taken as punishment for a crime no one remembers for a purpose no one understands. Their tormentor is a woman named Penelope who never ages, never grows sick, and never forgives a debt. Ten years ago Violet Everly's mother left to break the curse and never return. Now Violet must find her mother or she will be taken in her place. Her hunt leads her into a seductive magical underworld of power-hungry scholars, fickle gods, and monsters bent on revenge and into the path of Penelope's quiet assistant Alexander who she knows cannot be trusted and yet to whom she finds herself undeniably drawn. Tied to a very literal deadline, Violet will travel to the edges of the world to find her mother and the key to the city of Stardust where the Everly's story began. So it sounds fine. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with the synopsis. It's just not grabbing me. And because I can only read so many fantasy books in the year just because of how long it takes me with reading them immersively, I'm very, very selective in the fantasies that I pick up. And I only keep the ones that I'm very, very much interested in, or of course, ones that are going to continue series that I'm already a part of. And unfortunately, this is just not one that I'm very drawn to. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pass it along to somebody who might be more excited to get a stunning copy of this book. And then the very last book that I decided to pick up was Close Enough to Touch by Colleen Oakley. Again, I read this in January and I really enjoyed it and wanted to have my own copy of it. So I went ahead and grabbed it, again, not being added to my physical TBR. So out of the 13 books that I hauled in January, only three are actually being added to my physical TBR. So after considering the books that I read for my TBR and now adding onto the three, I should be up to 70 books on my physical TBR if my numbers are correct. I'm going to try to make sure I'm doing the math correctly during editing. So we're going to see. But right now, I think I have 70 books on my physical TBR. Now let's go ahead and talk about the books that I am unhauling. All right, so the first book I'm unhauling is The Wife by Alifair Burke. So I actually just recently read The X by Alifair Burke and the reason why I chose to read that over this is because I'm actually currently partaking in a TBR challenge. It is a challenge that I'm hosting on the book club that I run over on Goodreads called the Bookworm Bitches Book Club and in the challenge there are 52 different prompts to help you select a book from your TBR in, in an effort to help you whittle down your TBR and one of the prompts led me to selecting The X and so I read The X by Alifair Burke and I really enjoyed it. I had a good time with it but the lasting capacity of that book is non-existent. I'm already forgetting almost everything that I read in the story and it kind of was the same situation with the other Alifair Burke that I read and I actually do still have it on my shelves but basically even though I think that she's a great writer and even though I think her plots are incredibly clever and engaging I don't really want to waste my time with books that don't evoke strong emotions in me and so since these are pretty forgettable in my opinion I think I'm going to go ahead and just let this one go without reading it. I'm also going to unhaul We Keep the Dead Close by Becky Cooper. This is actually a non-fiction. I think it's kind of like a memoir slash true crime ish about Becky Cooper's personal experience with a crime that I think happened in Harvard. Yeah 1969 Harvard and her experiences being close to a crime that happened or something like that and I'm still somewhat interested in this story but I actually thought about reading it at one point and I was trying to find the audio and the audiobook was not easily accessible to me. So if I were going to read this I would have to use an audible credit for this and I just don't think I want to read it enough to spend an audible credit on this. If you know you know audible is very expensive. I try to be very selective about what I use an audible credit on and even though I think the story sounds pretty interesting I do feel okay with letting this one go and eventually if I do really really want to read it I can spend an audible credit on it so I'm gonna let this one go. I'm also letting go When We Were Bright and Beautiful by Jillian Medoff. This was actually on my January TBR and I decided not to read it. I decided to use another book to satisfy the challenge prompt that this was going to satisfy because even though I read the synopsis of it and it sounds like something that should be right at my alley but literally nothing about the story was drawing me in. I had no interest to read it whatsoever and so I think I'm gonna go ahead and trust my instincts on that and let it go and I have since heard a lot of people say that they didn't love it so I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye. Similarly I'm saying goodbye to The Spanish Love Deception by Alina Armas. This is one that I picked up because for all intents and purposes again I should love this. This is supposed to be like some kind of fake dating slash hate to love romance and I've heard great things about it but I've also heard terrible things about it. This is another one that I've actually really had no interest in picking up. The only reason why I picked this up was because it satisfied a TBR game prompt and by the time it came to read it I did not want to read it so I'm letting it go. This next book is going to be the last book that I'm officially unhauling but I I think I'm going to request your opinion on whether I'm going to unhaul more and I'll tell you why in a second. So I have The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. Now this is one that I picked up for a couple of reasons. One, it's definitely been going around in terms of popularity. A lot of people really really love this and what really sold me is that Sid from Sid Bookworm absolutely loved this story and she's not necessarily a romance reader. That's definitely not her preferred genre and so when I heard that she loved this so much I was intrigued. I wanted to pick this up and then I actually got the idea to do a video where I read popular spicy talk book talk books to 
see if they're actually worth the hype. And this is going to fit right into this. So I actually picked this one up along with several other books that I will talk to you about in a second. And I have since kind of made the decision not to proceed with the video. I actually started this one because again, this came up as part of that TBR challenge that I'm taking part of. And I started to read it and I got 17% of the way through and I wasn't hating it at all, but I wasn't loving it. It wasn't drawing me in. It wasn't capturing me. I wasn't emotionally attached to it. And after reading some reviews about this story, I heard that it's very, very insta lovey and I could already tell it was heading into that direction because this book does something that really, really irritates me in romance books where the two main characters, they meet and they cannot stop I fucking each other. They're trying to curb those reactions because it's inappropriate and they shouldn't feel that way. And it's just obnoxious. I hate when they do that. And I can just already tell that it's going to lead to something more and it takes out the intensity of it and it lessens the stakes for me when they do that. So I was already annoyed and I could already see where it was headed. And this is not a short romance book, y'all. It is 436 pages. So you're telling me that there could be a chance of insta love in this where they're getting together before they halfway mark. And then there's going to be two to 300 pages of unnecessary conflict and drama to fuel the plot. And I absolutely hate that. So I'm going to go ahead and unhaul this one. And I feel really no qualms about it. But the other ones I want to get your opinion on. I have Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton. Now this one is definitely all the rage. It is going around. It is a super dark messed up romance. I typically don't read dark messed up romance. I don't necessarily know if that's going to be my thing, but I was really intrigued by this one. I certainly love the cover. I think it's absolutely beautiful. This one kind of makes me a little bit nervous, but it definitely gets a lot of praise. So you'll have to let me know what you think about keeping this. Next, I have Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan. And to be honest, I was not just going to be reading this one because it was a popular TikTok book, but it was going to be a second chance kind of deal. I started a book. I can't remember what the name of it was at this point, but I DNF'd it. There was so many things that I had a problem with at the start of that book, and I just could not stand what I was reading. But this is one that I hear a lot of amazing things about. And so I wanted to go ahead and use it to give her a second chance because a lot of people really love and trust this author. And I thought that maybe I was missing something. And so I picked this up not only for that vlog that I was going to do, but also as a second chance. But now I'm not sure since I've scrapped the vlog if I want to care enough to give her a second chance. So you'll have to let me know about this one. I also have The Coppersmith Farmhouse by Devney Perry. Now in full transparency, this is another second chance author kind of situation. I have started and DNF'd two Devney Perry's in the past. But again, Devney Perry is a super popular romance author. I absolutely love the covers of her stories. I think that they are absolutely gorgeous and I want to give her a try. But another thing that I've learned about myself this year is that I am not a romance series girly. So knowing everything that you know about me as a romance reader, please let me know if you think I should continue with Devney Perry. I just love the covers of her books so much and they actually sound really amazing. But at the same time, I don't know if they're my thing. So I'm waiting on you to give me your opinion. I also got The Addicted to You by Krista and Becca Ritchie. Now this is another super popular romance series that I hear amazing, amazing things about. But again, I don't know if it's going to be my speed. So please let me know. Similarly, I have Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. In all honesty, this is one that I picked up for that vlog exclusively. I had never heard of this author. I had never heard of the series. I absolutely loved the cover of this. And when I realized that it was a spicy talk book, I was like, perfect, this will fit in with the vlog. But I believe this is kind of like a dark mafia romance. Mafia romances have never been my thing ever. So I'm not really sure about this one as well. So those last books are not books that I'm going to be officially unhauling. Those are kind of like on the shelf. I'm not really sure whether or not I'm going to unhaul them or not. I'm going to wait to hear your opinion. But if I did my math correctly, taking into consideration the books that I read from my physical TBR, I unhauled from it and I added to it, I should roughly be around 65 physical books on my TBR going into February. And that is down from 71. So I have officially gotten six books off of my physical TBR and I'm quite happy about that. All right, everybody, that is it. That is the end of the very first monthly roundup. Please comment down below and let me know what you think of this type of video. Or if you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a strawberry emoji. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week on Wednesdays and Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all.